Good morning everyone. It's a beautiful sunny day out there and it's not so hot that we're uncomfortable and uh, God be praised for that this morning. Um, today's service is about prayer. It's about persisting in prayer which means keep trying. So we're going to be thinking about what that means and how we do that this morning and we're going to be blessed with the parables of Jesus read to us this morning. Um, but before we do that, we're going to have a few notices and uh, I want to draw particular attention to the Children's Holidays Club. Uh, we've got uh, something tomorrow at 10 o'clock. It will be going live on Facebook and we've got the circus coming to town. So that will be exciting. And then on the 17th, we've got something else. And do remember to collect your bags in time for tomorrow if you haven't already done so. Um, all the details are on Facebook on our website. We've had a number of losses in the church recently and there's a funeral on Wednesday I'd like you to pray for particularly at this time. So um, we will pray in a minute. But I want to remind you of some words from the Bible from Psalm 17. It says, I call on you, O God, for you will answer me. Give ear to me and hear my prayer. And so we pray this morning that you will be blessed. Lord God, come and be in our service, in our homes, separated and yet together. Lord God, we thank you that we can do this and you are there. Amen. Now, the Bible says that um, there is, uh, the earth is the Lord and everything in it. And uh, we are going to have a children's talk. We're going to think about prayer. And then we are going to sing a very famous song, He's Got the Whole World in His Hands. And um, before we do, I want you to think about this parable. I'm just going to tell it as a, ch as a children's talk first before we have the reading and before we have the children's talk. So one day, a woman who had nobody caring for her went to see a judge. She had something on her mind she needed him to sort out. She knocked on the door and the judge didn't answer. He wasn't a friendly judge, he didn't care, said the woman. He still did not pay any attention. Oh, I am so fed up with this woman, the judge said. I will go down and answer her. And Jesus said, how much more will your heavenly father listen to you? So let's go to the children's talk now and think about prayer, coming before God and asking for his help. Let's go to the children's talk now. Today we're thinking about prayer and I thought it would be good in the summer to have a children's talk. So um, here it is about prayer. So when I was uh, small, I used to uh, write for my teacher and uh, the teacher used to uh, put loads of red ink over it and used to correct me and you used to get ticks and crosses all over the place and that was the same with spellings or times tables or other things. But teachers have learned that it's much, much better to encourage uh, their pupils and I've got one of uh, my daughter's old exercise books and just like the ones you use. And you'll see that there's red writing over, over her uh, writing. And there are things like, uh, a good idea. I liked the fact that it was partly true. Um, and then another one. This is nice writing. You should try and explain a little of what the book is actually about. Some very good points. Remember, always justify your points with a reason. And lots of enthusiastic comments like, ooh, cake baking, I like it, or good idea, great. But in each comment, as well as saying what's good about it and really conveying that well as a teacher, you will also find some feedback which says you could improve here or maybe you'd like to adjust your ideas in this direction to be even better. And that's a bit like prayer with God we need some feedback, 
So when we pray, we listen, we're persistent, we try hard, really hard, like you do with an exercise book. But you keep practicing and God helps. Now, I've got something beside me, which is a bit of a mystery, and you'll find out tomorrow if you're coming to Holiday Club. This, well, I'm not going to show you what it is, but you'll have to find out tomorrow. These are something else. Now, I'm having to learn how to juggle, and I'm not very good at it, as you can see. I'm doing better than I did to start with because I've been practicing. And sometimes keep on praying for the same thing is like practicing. We just need to keep trying and we get better and better as we go. So I'm going to keep practicing for tomorrow for the holiday club that, uh, that Chris has so wonderfully organized. Um, myself, Fran and Louise are going to be doing the circus. So come along to the circus and see what's whoop, happening. And I do need to practice that's for sure. Find out what's going on with this. Hi, it's great to be with you and if you're able to stand up, why don't you stand up wherever you are and join in with our actions. And the first action is going to be creating this globe with our hands. Are you ready? He's got the whole world. for people uh, playing songs like that to us from their attic room and playing it so well and amusing us at the same time. I hope you were pointing along with me. Um, I was certainly pointing at Keith and Margaret next door and at uh, Abs and McLean up in Shortstown and Rob and Lou further afield and everybody in Wilsted too, Chris too, Ian up there as well. So bless you all this morning. Um, we are now going to go over to uh, Anne. I'm trying to think. I can see her face and my mind went blank, but that happens when you're live. We're going to go over to Anne now for our reading from the Bible. Now in the readings from Luke chapter 18, verses 1 to 8. I'm reading from the New International Version and it's entitled The Parable of the Persistent Widow. 
Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them they should always pray and not give up. He said, in a certain town, there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea, grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused, but finally he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see she gets justice that's so that she won't eventually come and attack me. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting it off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the son of man comes, will he find faith on the earth? God bless you all. Thank you for our reading, Anne. So this parable of the persistent widow in Luke. Jesus told these uh, things to the disciples who were listening to show them that they should always pray and not give up. It's not fair is something that resounds with us throughout our lives. From the earliest of ages, children will start to say, it's not fair. It's not fair, mum and dad, when you let my brother do this or my sister do that. It's not fair, Mrs. Bloggs, in the classroom, when you choose me and I don't want to do it for a job. It's not fair when you get told off for something. As adults, this continues. We look at the case of PC Harper that's been in the news this last few weeks again. And we say, it's not fair, along with his widow. We look at the case of George Floyd over in the States. And we say, it's not fair. We might think closer to home, we might think about coronavirus and we might think about how it affects older people more than younger people, people from black and minority ethnic groups more than white Caucasian. It's not fair that the young are able to take more risks than those of us who are older without being affected. It's not fair when somebody doesn't wear a mask and they should. All these things bother us. And today's sermon is about injustice. This parable was a, uh, contained a widow and a judge. The widow was somebody who was not respected in society as somebody who could um, affect her own future. Most of the time, it was the men that could do that. Uh, in those ancient times and she needed somebody to advocate for her and that might explain why she turned up at the judge's door and she was using pester power just like a child who thinks it's not fair except she had a real concern she had something that needed sorting out and only the judge could help her so just like those earlier cases where somebody is in a position of power like a parent or a teacher or a judge or the jury, um, she went along to the judge's house to sort it out with him. Trouble is, that judge was not a just judge. He wasn't interested in doing the right thing. He was interested in an easy life. And he wasn't bothered by this woman who kept coming around and pestering him. But that nuisance value spoke to him. We know if we're nagged, we will eventually get round to doing that job. We know if we read signs on the motorway that tell us to keep our uh, distance, we are more likely to do it. And this widow goes to speak to the judge over and over again. And she says, it's not fair, give me justice. She must have believed in her cause and she must have believed that she was worthwhile, even though the courts didn't and the just judge didn't. She was after justice, just like a child, like all those other cases we've looked at. 
And Jesus says, that's how we should be when we go before God. We should be persistent. We should always pray and not give up. Well, how hard that is in these times. Sometimes we have felt uh, frustrated, angry, despondent, confused. Um, we feel like we're not in control of our lives at the moment with this virus. But the Bible teaches us that we should be persistent in our prayers for it. And I'm sure you are being. There's something else hidden in this passage. Jesus says, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones? Years ago, one of my children came home and told me that the teacher had said to use their pester power about the environment. So anything she could see that was wrong with the way we ran the house, she would be there telling us which detergent to use or not to use, and whether or not we should be doing this, that, and the next thing, or uh, walking somewhere, uh, uh, and uh, lots of other things, spraying pesticides on things. And we learned lots from her, um, although we were already quite aware but is that a picture of God? Is God not aware of what we, uh, we need? Of course not. He is very aware of what we need. So why does Jesus teach us to be persistent in prayer? What does it produce in us that's worth having from God's perspective? Of course, when we see injustice, when we see things that are wrong with the world and the people uh, around us, um, uh, we might be despondent because we feel we can't affect things and we feel God's not able to take control but of course that's also something that this passage tells us we find our faith in institutions might wane we might think that the justice system is not what it was the government can't do um, what we had hoped that they would be able to achieve the way we've set up society isn't working and we are feeling it's not fair again. We may lose faith in all those institutions. And similarly, when we pray and we keep praying about something, it's very difficult sometimes to have faith that God will do as he has promised. So what gives us the right to think that God will do something when we see injustices that we're unhappy about? We see the weak exploited. We see um, people hurt, we see um, things that we feel are not fair. When we look at the life of Jesus, we see he cared about little insignificant people. He would never have described them as that, but he cares about you. He cares because he loves you just as you are, however you are feeling today. What a wonderful thing. When we look at Jesus' life, we see he spent time with the sick and struggling, the people who were scorned by the rest of society, the people who society said didn't matter. He told stories about those people, and he said they matter in God's kingdom. And this is a message we all need to hear. We all need to know that we matter, however we are feeling. That God loves us and he wants what's best for us. So God is not like that unjust judge. He will give us what we need, but persistence in prayer is a demonstration of the faith that we have in the person we go to. When a child comes to a parent, they come knowing that they can change things. And we do that when we come before God and say, Lord, you can do something about this. And we keep coming back. And our faith is raised and grows, and our relationship with God grows as we do that. And so this is the source of the comment at the end. However, when I come back again, Jesus says, will I find faith on earth? Will you have stuck with it? Will you have um, followed me no matter what? 
So rather than the injustices of the world are getting in the way of our faith, there are reason for extending our faith. There are reason for reaching out to God and asking him for help. The widow in this passage knew she had no power. She knew the man who could do something about it. We know we have no power in these days more than we have for a long time. We know that God can help us. And we know that we can come before him because he loves us and he thinks we are worthwhile. We know that he cares for the weakest, the most vulnerable, the sickest, the most fragile people. And we know that he cares more than we do. So we're called as a community of faith to pray faithfully for those people and trust that he will work his good in those situations. So as we leave the sermon this morning, we think, God is good. He is not an unjust judge. When he comes again, we should follow him and be faithful. We should keep on praying and never give up because we know that those prayers are heard in the great throne room of heaven. And so we persist. We know that we should care about injustice and we should pray about it. So be persistent in prayer in all things. Keep going. Keep raising up your hands and use them as part of the armour of God. In Jesus' name. So, God cares. That's a wonderful thing. He cared so much that he sent his son Jesus to come to this earth, God himself, and to experience the world from a baby all the way through to a man who was crucified for you. He came because he loved you. We're going to stand and sing, From Heaven You Came, and just remember exactly how much God cares and how much he, uh, it cost him to care for us. So from heaven you came, helpless babe. Seven.
So on this beautiful morning I thought that I would take you on a prayer walk so that we can enjoy being together in the beautiful place that God has given us. So how does this relate to justice? Well, when we look outside our church, outside our door, it's very easy, and soon there'll be one, to see cars travelling to and from work. To see the cars as they go, it reminds us that we should pray for the workplace. So Lord, we ask you to be active in uh, businesses, in uh, communities of work. Lord, we ask you to help them to recover from this virus. We ask for fairness and justice in the workplace. We ask that businesses will not put finances above everything else, but that they will care for their workers as they travel this morning. Lord God, we move a bit further afield and we look towards our church hall. We look at our cottage room and we look at the hall itself. And Lord, we ask that you are active in these places once again. Lord, we pray for the decisions that have to be made. We pray for the children that we want to teach about you. And we ask you to give us wisdom as we try to bring about justice in this difficult world. Lord, we pray for um, children across the world who have less access to facilities and care than we do. And Lord, we ask you to keep them safe. We ask you to send them uh, money from countries that are better off so that we, we can help them and they can be uh, themselves in you. Lord, bring justice in their townships, in their homes, wherever they are. And Lord, we pray for the virus not to leave more orphans. Lord, those orphans need our prayers too. So we just ask you to help them. Lord, we ask for provision of services. We ask for church people to help. And Lord, we leave that with you, knowing that you care for little children. As we move towards the allotments, we pray for our farmers. Lord, they have had so much to cope with. They're trying to get the harvest in now. And so, Lord, we just ask that you, as the God of the harvest, help us to get that in. Lord, we pray that people will be well looked after on our farms and there won't be exploitation. Lord, we know that there are um, places which exploit people. Lord, we know through fostering in our community that uh, certain people are exploited when they're young, when they have difficult upbringings. And so, Lord, we pray for those people who have experienced uh, terrible inequity and injustice across the world through exploitation. Lord, we thank you for our farmers uh, this week uh, in, in my hometown. Uh, the tractors and the harvesters have been rumbling up day and night, 24 hours a day. And Lord, we thank you for their hard work. We pray that they will get rest and we pray for their safety, Lord. Thank you that they feed us. Lord, as we walk through this beautiful orchard, we pray for the community that comes after us. And we ask, Lord, that you will help us to make good decisions about the trees, about planting, about the care of it. Lord, we thank you that you give us this to uh, benefit the community and not just ourselves. And then we turn to our church field. I don't know if the sun's going to let me do that. Yes, Lord, we thank you for our field. Lord, help us to use it for your glory. Lord, we thank you for the picnic we had, that we could meet together and have fellowship meaningfully. And Lord, we ask that you bless it for this community. 
we ask that your name goes forth from this field and that we make your glory across the heavens known. Lord, give us the words to say that are relevant to people today. Give us ways to use this place, we ask in Jesus' name. Lord, as we move further afield around our property, we move towards the graveyard. And um, I don't know if you can see the graves there. <laughs> There's gravestones behind me. But Lord, we ask you to help those, particularly at this time, who mourn and who've lost loved ones. Lord, we thank you that you give the church a ministry here. Lord, we pray particularly for people that we know uh, who have lost their dearest relatives, their mothers and their wives and their grandparents. Lord, we just ask you to be with them. You are a God who looks after those who feel fragile and vulnerable. And so, Lord, we ask your blessing in those places this morning. Lord, in a world which is grieving because of lots of loss, we ask you to be with the people that are grieving, to comfort them in their distress and to be their Lord and their strength. Lord God, we look at our church building and we remember that it is yours. It's not ours. And we are here to bring it into new life for the next generation. Lord, we look at our window, um, which has been broken. And Lord, we ask for wisdom here. Lord, thank you that you give us the opportunity to renew and refresh such a beautiful building. Give us uh, wisdom, help us to act wisely together and at all times keep you prominent and first in our thoughts when we look at our church building and use it. Lord, we pray that we will be in that place soon. We pray for your love to go out whilst we are out and us to think more carefully about how we behave as church family. Lord, we pray for ourselves as we miss uh, meeting together. We miss being able to sing uh, together and encourage one another and share uh, each Sunday. So, Lord, thank you that you give us the internet, but please bring us back to this place, we ask in Jesus' name. Lord, we hear people working around the place. Lord, help us to use this place wisely. Lord, we go to our war memorial now and we thank you that this is a place of blessing to the community. Lord, we pray for people in the British Legion, people who know soldiers. We know that they will be fighting and they will be in close contact in all, using all sorts of equipment uh, in ways that perhaps aren't recommended. So we pray for your protection and we pray for peace in our country. Lord, we thank you that they are there to protect the weak um, and uh, they, uh, being strong, can do that. Lord, we pray for the work of chaplains across the services. We pray that they will bring comfort where it's needed and strength to those in trouble. So, Lord, we commit our prayers to you this morning and we ask you to uh, continue in your work for justice. In Jesus' name, amen.
As we come to the end of our service, I want to apologise that there were a few problems as uh, I was travelling around. Um, there was uh, some learning going on and I'm going to need to persist a bit more because it was me that put some of the videos into the uh, broadcasting studio that uh, manages our system. And I didn't know that when you use a mobile phone you have to tra change the format, so that was my fault. I'm glad you could hear me anyway. But we've got some thanks to uh, give. We have some thanks for answered prayer and it is an example where so, so many people from our church and from other churches have been praying for um, uh, somebody who's been really unwell and we have seen a tumour shrink and move in the right direction just that little bit. So Lord, we want to thank you for those answered prayers, spoken and unspoken. Lord, we thank you that you work your goodness in those situations. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, it's made very clear to us in another bit of scripture in Matthew 7. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks the door will be opened. Which of you, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then know that you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to you who ask? So in everything do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. So we pray for justice, but we do act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with our God, who gives as we ask in the fullness of time. So may this week be a week of justice and a week of forgiveness, a week of activity and a week of prayer, and a week where God's blessing falls richly on you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning. We, uh, we will leave it there knowing that God has you in his hands.